You're listening to The Taylor Marshall Show, episode 125, and today we continue our series on heresies. We look at the monophysite heresy. It comes from Greek, mono, only one, phusis, nature, only one nature. It's the heresy originated with a man named Eutyches, who taught that Christ was only divine, fully God, not fully man. And today we'll focus on the council of the Catholic Church that condemned the Monophysite heresy, that is, the Council of Chalcedon. Also, this class is a little bit different. It's an audio version of a video lesson that we did at the New St. Thomas Institute in our certificate in Catholic Church history, particularly the Church Fathers and the Ecumenical Council. So if you'd like to study with us, you can go to NewStThomas.com. Otherwise, just sit back and enjoy this audio lesson on the Monophysite heresy, and the Council of Chalcedon. Howdy, and thank you for tuning in to The Taylor Marshall Show. This is the podcast for everyone who wants to create daily habits and learn enough theology to take their faith to the next level. My goal this week is to introduce to you the heresy of Eutyches, the heresy of the Monophysites, the Council of Chalcedon, and because it's a pre-recorded video lesson that's been converted from the New St. Thomas Institute, we won't go into a Latin word of the week or into a tip of the week. We'll just go straight into the lesson. Hope you enjoy. God bless. Hey, welcome back to the New St. Thomas Institute. I'm really glad you're here for this lesson on the Monophysite heresy, whether or not Christ has one or two natures. It's very important doctrine, both for Christology, but also for the doctrine of salvation, soteriology, how it is that we are saved. Now, you might remember from the previous lesson, we talked about the patriarch, the bishop named Nestorius. And Nestorius was trying to divide the person of Christ. You'll remember that he was opposed to the idea that Mary was the Theotokos, the mother of God, and therefore his solution was to posit a divine Jesus and a human Jesus who worked together, who worked in tandem. Well, there was a reaction to that. We know that that was condemned in the year 431 at the Council of Ephesus, and immediately after that there was a swing in the other direction. There was a priest named Eutyches, and Eutyches was in Constantinople, where Nestorius had been, and he began to preach and make popular the idea that Christ had only one nature. Only one nature. You'll remember that Nestorius taught two natures and two persons. Eutyches is teaching, no, 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 Christ is one, and not only is he one, he has one nature, a divine nature. All right, now this is going to lead us, the pendul- the pendulum's going to swing from a divided Christ, two of them, all the way to a Christ with no human nature. And the name of this heresy is the Monophysite heresy, from mono, meaning only one, and phusis, which means nature. So this heresy teaches that Christ only has one nature. It denies that Christ has a human nature. In other words, they say Christ is God alone. Of course, this is going to be rejected by the Catholic Church, and it's rejected by all Christians on earth, even the, the Protestants and many of the Eastern churches. They reject the monophysite here. There are a few that still hold on, and they, they use a different term. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But the monophysite heresy was condemned in the year 451 at the Council of Chalcedon. Now, first of all, we need to understand the difference between a nature and a person. Now, a nature is what a thing is. For example, dogs have a dog nature. If I say, what is that? You would say, that is a human, or that is a dog, that is a jackrabbit. But when I say, who is that? I'm referring to a person. So the question, what, refers to a nature. The question, who, refers to a person. So, if you were saying, who did that? The answer wouldn't be, a human nature did that, you would say Tommy did that, right? 
So, and if you said, what is that? You wouldn't say, well, that's Joe, right? You would say, that's my dog. His name is Joe, okay? So there's a distinction philosophically between a whatness, a nature, and a whoness, a person. In the orthodox teaching that's accepted by all Christians is that there is one who, one person, and two what's. There's a divine nature and a human nature. So when you say, who is Christ, you say he is the divine person, the second person of the Trinity. But when you say, what is Christ, you say, well, there's actually two what's. He has a human nature and he has a divine nature. So this is the solution to this problem. And you can see that the problem that Nestorius had, he wanted to have two something, but he made it two separate. And the problem with Eutyches and the Monophysites, they want to have one something, is avoided because Christ has a twofold nature with one person. That's the ultimate solution here. So that's the difference between a nature and a person. You really need to know that. You need to burn that into your memory that a nature is a what and a person is a who. If you've got that, you've just solved a lot of philosophical problems. You're very advanced. It's a very important distinction that you want to get early on. Nature and person. Now, this heresy, although it was condemned, began to spin out two further heresies down the line. All right, the first was called the monothelite heresy. And this heresy said, it was kind of like a monophysite modified. They said, okay, well, there's one person, there's two nature, human divine, but Christ only has one will, a divine will. He doesn't have a human will. And you'll remember, this kind of harkens back to the heresy of Apollinarianism, which said that Christ didn't have a soul. The church countered and said, no, 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 Christ has, he's one person, he has a human nature, a divine nature, and because of that, he has a human will and a divine will. Because, again, Christ, God has to save us, our bodies, he has to save our souls, and he saves even our will, and therefore anything that he saves in us, he gave to Christ to be redeemed through him. Okay, so that was the monothelite heresy. It was also condemned by the Catholic Church. And then another heresy sprung up called iconoclasm. And iconoclasm said we should break up the icons. We should break up the images of Jesus because Jesus is God and you can't make an image of God. Therefore, you should have no images of Jesus anywhere in the world. And so this was a very violent heresy. They wanted to wash over churches, whitewash churches, and destroy any image of Jesus. Now, if you think about it, and you're theological, and you've learned about the Monophysites, you'll say, you know, that is a form of the Monophysite heresy, because what they're saying is, is that Jesus is only God, and therefore he can't be depicted. But we know that he is fully God and fully man, and therefore we can depict him as a human, right? He has a human nature, and a human nature, if you saw someone with a human nature, you can take a camera and take a picture of them, and it will develop. You'll see a human on it. If you have a video camera, you can video someone with a human nature, and that in that video, for example, you'll see me because I have a human nature. Same with Christ. There weren't any cameras back then, but Christ had a physical appearance, right? He was, he had a human nature, and therefore we can depict him in art. So you can see that the monothelite, Christ has one will, and the iconoclastic controversy, you can't paint any pictures of Jesus, both derive from this error of the Monophysite heresy. Now, historically, there's a bit of confusion about this heresy because there were churches, for example, the Egyptian church, centered in Alexandria, the Ethiopian church, I believe the Armenian church as well. They did not accept this council, the Council of Chalcedon, and their argument went like this. St. Cyril of Alexandria, the one who refuted Nestorius, he said that Christ had one nature, in Greek, miaphusis. They would, be called, they would call themselves miaphysites. And therefore, we believe that we should continue to say one nature. Now, the difference between what they're saying and what Eutyches was saying is that Eutyches was saying there's only one nature, and these other groups are just using the word one. They're not using the only. So they don't say mono, they say mia. It's a difference in Greek but it has a subtle difference, okay? It, it, it is, in fact, distinct. Well, these churches have remained apart from both the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church, but 
beginning in the, the 70s and the 80s, and really through the work of St. John Paul II, through ecumenical dialogue and discussions, it was discovered that these churches, these Miaphysite churches, like in Egypt and in Ethiopia, had an orthodox Christology, but there was a vocabulary difference. And so there's great work to bring them together. And even the Eastern Orthodox Church has recognized that these jurisdictions, in fact, have a sound Christology. There's just a vocabulary difference there on these Greek words, as often happens whenever you're talking about heresy. The vocabulary always has to be clarified. So what can we take home from this, right? We can learn about this ancient heresy, and we can sound very smart, but what does it mean for us living today? Well, it's important that we recognize who exactly Christ is, not just who he was. We can speak of him in the temple, who he is. Right now, Christ is one person, two natures, two what's, human and divine. So what does that mean? Well, if we somehow let go that he was human, let's say he's just, after he rose from the dead, he just became a divine being again with no human nature, that would not help us too much because we read in the epistle of Hebrews that Christ right now continues to be our high priest because his human nature has been taken into heaven. Christ currently has a human nature. He has a human body. He has a human soul. And because of that, we humans down here on earth can participate in the mystery of his humanity. And it's his humanity that unites us to the deity, that gives us access to God, that gives us access to his love and to his grace, and ultimately gives us access to heaven forever. So if we get this doctrine wrong, if we become monophysites, in a sense, we cut ourselves off from God and we cut ourselves off from heaven and that's not at all what we want to do. Well, hey, thanks for watching this episode. If you haven't seen the previous ones on Nestorianism or the one on the four early Christological heresies, I'd really encourage you to see that because it's, it's important that we look at all these heresies because when you look at what's wrong, you can understand what's right. So by studying heresy, we get closer to understanding the truth about who Jesus Christ our Lord is. Thanks so much for watching, and God bless. All right, there it is, um, the Monophysites, the Miaphysites, and the controversy over the two natures of Christ. Again, if you'd like to learn more, if you'd like to earn a certificate in Catholic theology, Catholic philosophy, we have a certificate in Catholic church history, a certificate in Catholic apologetics, and a certificate in medieval church history, go to the New St. Thomas Institute. They're short, brief videos like the one you just experienced in our, in audio. And uh, we have 3,000 students all over the world studying Catholic theology, philosophy, apologetics, and church history. Hopefully next year, also biblical studies and biblical theology. Until next time, remember that our Lord Jesus Christ said that you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. Salty.